Okay, so today we're going to be making a compound out of two elements. The first element is the metal iron, um, and we are going to be using the powdered form, and we can see that it is flammable. The second one we're going to be using is going to be um, sulphur, which is a non-metal, and again we're going to use a powdered form, and again it's flammable. <laughs> Safety precautions for this um, experiment are that we need to make sure that the iron and sulphur powder have the lids on and are kept away from any open flames that we're using. We also need to make sure that we wear goggles um, as soon as we are using the Bunsen burners to protect our eyes. We're going to compare the properties of our original elements. So this is a lump of iron this time and a lump of sulphur. We're going to compare those with the properties of the compound that we make. So the first property we're going to observe is the colour. And we can see obviously that sulphur is this very nice yellow colour. And then iron is this kind of silvery grey colour. And we're going to fill those in on the table on our worksheet. So colour here and colour here. The next thing we're going to look at then is the state of matter. So obviously a solid and again a solid. And we can fill those in on the table. The next thing we're going to look at, the next property is whether it's magnetic or not. Um, we can see if we try either end of the magnet on the sulphur, it's not magnetic. And if we try the iron, we can see that it is magnetic. We're now going to test out whether each of the elements we're dealing with is a conductor of electricity. So I've got a buzzer here and there's a gap in the circuit and we're going to try putting the sulphur into the gap and we don't have any noise being created which suggests this is not a conductor. And then if we put the iron into the gap We can clearly hear that the buzzer is going off and therefore our iron is a conductor. And the very last property we're going to test is whether each is brittle or not. So I like to wrap whatever you're testing up um, first, just in case anything um, flicks out at you when you hit it. So we're going to hit it with a hammer uh, and this is our iron element. And as I'm sure you all guessed, it's not broken um, and therefore it's not brittle. So let's try the sulphur next. We're just going to wrap it up. And as you can see, it has now become um, a powder few big lumps in there but most of it's powdered and therefore we can tell that it is brittle. So you should now have filled out the first two columns of your table. Um, so your sulphur is not magnetic, it's not a conductor and it is brittle and your iron is magnetic, is a conductor and is brittle. So now we need to measure out our uh, iron powder and our sulphur powder. We're going to start with the sulphur powder. So I'm just going to put a piece of paper onto the balance and we need to zero the balance. And then we're going to measure out two grams of sulphur. And you can see it's just over two grams, but that's fine. We're now going to measure out our iron and we're going to do 3.5 grams of the iron. Just zero that again. And again, we've gone a little bit over, but that's Fine. Okay, so now we have our two powders and we need to create a mixture. So we're going to mix the two together simply by pouring one <clears throat> to the other. Now you may see that there's a few lumps in here. So I'm just going to fold this over and press down to get rid of any lumps. There we go. And it doesn't have to be 
mixed every little bit, but as long as it's fairly well mixed, that will be fine like that. So now we're going to fill out the third column of our table for our mixture. So for this one, we're just going to do the colour and the state, which obviously the colour is yellow and grey now, and um, the state is still a solid um, powder. And then there's a new question here, can it be separated? Um, and really we're asking, can it be separated by physical means? And I'm going to show you how to do that. Okay, so I've put a magnet into a bag just to stop stuff getting all stuck to the magnet. And now I'm going to use a physical means, i.e. the magnet, to separate my mixture. So if I tap it down onto here, you can see that the iron is separating out. Now, a little bit of the sulfur is stuck to it, but if you look, as I tap it, the sulfur is falling back down because obviously it's not magnetic. And I could get all of the um, iron in this way, um, but I'll just leave that there. Now, when we want to get our iron back, because obviously we want to use it, if you just put your hand into the bag and then lift up the magnet, you can see that it will all fall back down. And now we do need to remix it a bit so that we don't have all of our iron in one place. There we go. And now we're ready to actually make our compound. So we should now have filled in the third column, the mixture, and we've just got the compound to go. So I need my uh, mixture to be in a boiling tube. So I'm just going to pour it in. and make sure that it's down to the bottom there. Okay, so now I have set my equipment up. I've got my stand boss and clamp here with my boiling tube, and you can see the mixture at the bottom. Now, I've got some cotton wool at the top just to stop any gases that are being made from escaping, but I must make sure this isn't packed too tightly, otherwise, no oxygen from the air can get in. Um, I've got my Bunsen burner and my heat mat. Um, and what's really important as well is that we have this at a good angle so we don't have it going straight up like that. We angle it <coughs> like this, okay? Now you do need to draw a diagram for this experiment and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. Okay, the last thing that we need to do is the diagram for this. So Remember that you must use a ruler and you must use a pencil to draw diagrams. So I'm going to start by drawing my stand, boss and clamp. Now I'm going to draw the base the other way round to normal and that's because that's how we had it so that we could fit our Bunsen burner underneath. Now you can draw your boiling tube freehand because obviously it's got curves. Okay, so that's what your diagram should look like before labelling. And now I'm just going to add the labels on. Okay, so stand, boss and clamp, and then we've got our boiling tube with our mixture in. Obviously it's not a mixture by the end, it's a compound, and then we've got the heat mat. 
You don't label the Bunsen burner because it's got this heat label in it, um, which is all that you need. And that is a completed experiment. Okay, so we're ready to light our Bunsen burner. So we must make sure that the collar is closed, so it'll be on the safety flame, and that we are actually wearing our goggles on our heads or on our eyes. Um, and we are ready to turn on the gas once we have the lit flame above the gas. Okay, now we want to turn the safety flame onto the hot flame by just opening the collar. And ideally we want the top of the blue cone to be at the end of our boiling tube. So you can see the gas that's forming and being given off. It stinks like rotten eggs. And you can see the red glow as the compound starts to form. Okay, I'm just gonna take the heat away. See, even with the heat gone, we've still got this red glow. Okay, so I've let this cool down a little bit and we're now ready to get our compound out of the boiling tube. So we're going to use some, uh, some tongs and we can take out the cotton wool. That stinks. And then you have to tap quite hard. There we go. So you can see here, this is the compound that we've made. Now we need to think about the properties of our compound. So we can see that the colour is a black or dark grey colour. It's now the state, just like the state of its two component elements, is solid. And so that's a shared property. Now, can it be separated, i.e. can we get the um, iron and the sulphur back by physical means? So we'll try our um, physical test with the magnet and obviously we can see that we are not managing to separate out the sulphur from the iron. Okay, so now we need to test out whether it's magnetic, whether it's a conductor and whether it's brittle. We're going to test the compound to see whether it's magnetic and we can see that it is not magnetic. We're now going to test our compound and see if it's a conductor of electricity. And as you can hear or not hear, the buzzer is not going off and therefore it's not a conductor. Lastly, we're going to test out and see whether it is brittle or not. So I'm just wrapping it up like before and then I'm going to get the hammer and let's have a look. So you can see that it is in fact very brittle. It's formed a very fine powder there. So we should now have filled in the whole of our table and we're on to the conclusion. So I'd like you to have a quick think about whether our compound has um, the properties of the elements it is made from. Okay, so hopefully you've managed to have a look at the different properties and compare the sulphur and the iron to the compound. <clears throat> I learned that the compound has some properties of each element. Now we could also add to that and say, and it does have 
um, one new property, which is the dark gray or black color um, that it now is. So here I've added to my conclusion to make it better and said it has a new property also, which is that it is black. So lastly then, we're gonna go on to the word equation and we're gonna try the formula equation as well. So I'm gonna write the beginning of the word equation, which is, so here is the beginning of the word equation. Iron plus sulfur, you can spell sulfur with an F, um, that's the American spelling, that's fine. Um, and I'd like you to pause the video and see if you can write what the name of the compound is. Remember our rules for naming compounds. You always put the metal first and you change the ending to "-ide", if it's two elements being added together. Okay, hopefully you managed to get this right. So iron goes first because it's the metal and then sulphur, but remember because it's a compound, you change the UR to IDE, which tells us that there are two elements, those being iron and sulphur. So, so you need to start with the symbol for iron and then the symbol for sulphur and then the formula for iron sulfide. So pause the video and see if you can write the formula equation. Pause now. Okay, so I've put the two symbols in for the elements. So if you managed to get those right, well done. And if you didn't, see if you can now get the formula for the compound. Okay, and here's the finished formula. So the formula for the compound iron sulfide is simply FES. And remember, it's really important that the E is lowercase because it's part of the symbol for iron, whereas the S needs to be a capital because it's a new element that you're talking about. 